Lyric Theatre, which I think opens in a couple of weeks' time. So, look forward to that. Uh, this will be followed by photographs and then refreshments. Now, with the photographs, uh, we have uh, a number of photographers, so if, you, if you're okay with your photographs possibly being shown, if not, you may just want to uh, uh, move away from any lenses, and there'll be an official sort of photographs being taken just after the unveiling. So, to get proceedings underway, uh, the Mayor of Islington. Thank you. I'm not the best mayor doing the mistake already. I'd just like to say it's great to see so many people here. It is so important for LGBT. I mean, it's sad that we have to have these things because people should have the right. We shouldn't be after who we are, what we are, you know, but we still must keep getting our, our message. Um, I want to thank Network Homes for giving us the permission to put this on the side of the building. Islington staff and libraries who are always amazing. These plaques really do mean something. Because so many people are studying Derek's work now. They can look up and, and that's important. It's a nice tribute to the person as well. But I'd just like to thank everybody here for coming. And, you know, tell all your friends, get on the internet and that. And, and just so people can remember who these people were that did so much to educate, it was a great advocate, you know, activist, you know, and there's people like that today, and if the world would be a better place if we we're more peaceful and tolerant, we should, you know, for who we are, what we are. So I just want to say on behalf of the London Borough of Islington, it's a great honour to be here and part of it. I thank Toya especially for taking time out of her rehearsals and everything. I'm sure we'd be pleased at the artist and anybody here who's taking pictures because that way it will get tweeted, it will get out of there and it will bring back to life what an important person he was. So thank you. Uh, my first introduction to Derek's work was by a photograph of the face, and it said, Toya's Tempest, because I've been too young to see Jubilee when it came out. Toya, let me find a Toya all great. And I went to see it. And there the are two threads running through Derek's life, and one of you is an artist, that's a continual practice of painter. And the other thread is that, um, he had friendships which had for years, and the thread of Derek's life and Toya's life are not just as a man in Jubilee, but the man in the Tempest. A performance piece we were both in at the South Bank years ago, I don't you remember that, uh, about a century cinema, and now again a stage show Jubilee. I'm so delighted that Toya's here to uh, unveil it. When I first met Derek in the 1980s, I knew we were going to make some mischief, and I thought we'd spend the rest of my life on it. As it was, he spent the rest of his life in England. We worked together on films and his garden until then, until one freezing February night in 1994. There was a man of many accomplishments, not just a filmmaker, but a diarist, writer, an astonishing poet. A designer, gardener, an activist. He even played the man in the musical Swan at the time I thought it was the worst din I'd ever heard, and I howled like a wolf playing to make a stop. As my taste in music has changed, I realise now he's also a fantastic musician. He could do anything. And it's while Derek lived here, you know, he worked for several major art shows, including the opening show for Listen Gallery. Derek's description of the home he forged here with his friends, some of whom are here today, it's lovely to see and smile on the from. It's one for everyone to envy. It was an amazing time. Some of the books Derek bought when he lived here and photographs of the time are lovingly kept them on display for the distance of the library and just because everyone visits them. One last thing, when Derek lived here, he saw the passing of the Sexual Offences Act of 1967 and much progress in equality has happened since his death. These are rights hard fought for. And as difficult as they were to gain, they can easily be removed and something that everyone should resist. Derek Jarman uh, long before I met him, when I lived in Norwich, long before I lived in Islington, I went to see Sebastiani at Cinema City 
And for weeks before that, there had been a controversy in the local paper about the main board being shown in a council-funded cinema. And I went along, and my jaw was dropping on the floor again and again and again, because I'd never seen such a fantastic homoerotic film entirely in Latin. <laughs> um, the first time I saw Derek was in 1987 and he was speaking at a conference on HIV and AIDS at the Queen Elizabeth Conference in Westminster and he uh, came out as a person who had HIV and that was an act of tremendous heroism because in 1987 some of you will remember how horrible uh, life for gay people was and for people with HIV and AIDS. Uh, people routinely talked about uh, uh, incarcerating people with AIDS, putting them on a rocky island in Scotland. Uh, gay men were routinely assaulted, there was queer bashing, there were murders. It was not a very pleasant world. And Derek stood up and said he had HIV and I thought that was such a great act of heroism. I met him shortly afterwards because the Thatcher government started with Section 28. This was a clause designed to uh, stop local authorities promoting uh, homosexuality, to stop any funding going towards gay people, lesbian people, and there was a fight back, and Derek was central to that fight back. And that's when I first met him, and I knew him primarily as an activist and also as a friend. Um, and he went on many, many, many demonstrations. He was always available. He was a controversialist. He was ready to write letters. He was ready to speak. I remember once in Afterwards, we went to Panther House in Rosebury Avenue. We sat on the roof and had coffee, and we talked about doing a statue to Oscar Wilde. Um, and Derek took this idea up and ran with it. And I'm very pleased to see Maggie Hamlin, who did the statue here today, um, which is in uh, just off Trafalgar Square. Um, Derek's heroism, his courage. His uh, intellectual uh, precociousness, excitement that he uh, generated was also matched by a personality of enormous charm. He was more interested in other people than he was in himself. He brought the best out of people. He made people feel interested and interesting. And I think those are very rare qualities. I'm very pleased, as a resident of Islington for 31 years now, that uh, I live in such a diverse, exciting borough, which has always had a fantastic role in LGBT history, starting with um, the Gay Liberation Front and uh, Highway Fields. So anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, I'm, I'm Toya, and uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not due to speak, but I, I just want to say thank you for all your words, because the one thing about Derek was he accepted everyone. He could see the good in everyone. It wasn't all about um, the politics of sexuality. It was actually the politics of academia as well. Uh, I, I'm probably the least academic person he ever knew and he accepted me on every level and I'm forever grateful for that because he gave me the confidence to do what I did for the next 40 years. Uh, I loved him like I love my father, he was so special and to be here today is such an honour and to be back with all you people who've supported him all this way, all his friends, his partners, uh, it's a joy. So, shall we? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.